Tonight, heartbreaking developments in the search for adorable little Robert Manuel. Police now say a body found floating in a nearby canal has been tentatively identified as being the eight-year-old boy who vanished without a trace 11 days ago. We have received word from the Ada County Coroner's Office that a tentative identification has been made of the body found in the New York Canal yesterday as that of eight-year-old Robert Manuel. Officials say a positive ID is coming as soon as they receive and can confirm dental records. The coroner's report does not suggest a cause of death. That, according to officials, is pending investigation. Does this mean there is a killer on the loose? If so, who? The coroner's report also says the place of death is unknown. Do cops believe Robert was killed elsewhere and his body dumped in the canal? The body was found about 15 miles from the boy's mother's apartment where little Robert vanished. But that long irrigation canal where the body was floating passes less than half a mile from the mom's apartment. Could the body have floated the 15 miles? The child's body was found just two miles away from a home that was searched by cops over the weekend. We will analyze these key locations in just a moment. This grim discovery comes after an intense search that had cops digging up the backyard of a family friend and searching Robert's mom's home for evidence. The boy's troubled mother was spotted last night leaving the police station crying. She had not been seen at the daily police news conference for days. That left some to ask, where is mom? What led police to search her apartment? What do you think about this tragedy? Give me a call straight out to my amazing expert panel, Terry Miles, crisis expert and psychologist, Mike Gaynor, retired NYPD detective and president of East Coast Detectives, Brian Russell, forensic psychologist and attorney, Curtis Sliwa, founder of the Guardian Angels. Boy, do we need you tonight, Curtis. And Wendy Murphy, former prosecutor and author of And Justice for Some. But first, on the phone, Dave Burnett, reporter with KIDOAN 580 in Boise, Idaho. Dave, I hate to even ask, what is the very latest? Well, as you know, uh, the press conference is held by a Boise Police Department stating that tentatively they have identified it as Robert Manuel. The coroner won't give a positive identification, a final one, until the dental records come through. But... I think we all knew yesterday at about 1.30 here Mountain Time when reports came in of the fact that a body had been found in the canal, everyone knew. There was no other young male reported missing anywhere in the Northwest. So I think everybody had that sinking feeling knowing that it was the body of Robert. And Dave, watching the news conference, the uh, law enforcement authority there made a statement, I believe it was the deputy chief, and then as he was walking out, everybody asked, are you making an arrest? Is this a homicide? answered no questions have been answered uh, even as we've emailed or text questions into pd uh, they have been very tight-lipped on this case since uh, a week ago last saturday you know wendy murphy before we get to the whole who what where where why how which we've got so much of tonight including google maps and sound bites i just have to express my revulsion at again we are covering this it seems like we lurch from one of these horrible stories to the next uh, innocent precious young children like this boy look at his face look at that face of innocence and they go missing and they turn up dead and there is something wrong with this country that we are covering this so often and we have to start looking at some underlying issues and not just covering the particulars of any one case but saying what can we do to protect our children wendy yeah, boy, I couldn't agree more. And they're often ending up in ponds and lakes and rivers. I mean, could you treat a child with more disrespect than to dump the body in a pond? I am so sickened by this. How many times have I said on your program, yet another case of yet another child dead from some horrifying circumstance? We still don't even know the details of how this child died. But I will tell you this, Jane, you want to talk about what we're doing wrong. I'll say this. Children don't vote and they don't have any money, which is why they're not respected enough in the way that we enforce our laws. People hurt children because they can get away with it because we never punish them nearly enough. I know you're going to disagree with that, and you're going to talk about drug abuse and all this other stuff, and that's fine. But you got to get them at the other end, too. you got to send a message that you hurt a kid. You're gone. Your liberty is gone. That's Absolutely. something we Jane, don't I, do in this country. Can I follow up on that in a little different way? If we have 
billions of dollars to spend buying people's clunkers. If we have cash for clunkers, then we have cash for kids' lives. It is inexcusable that Child Protective Services across this country is as underfunded and understaffed as it is, as it is. and this is one of the more horrendous failures of Child Protective Services that you and I, I think, have ever covered. Absolutely, and that is because, and I'm not saying the mom is a suspect by any way, shape, or form, but Curtis Slee, well, the fact is that this boy's mother did not have custody. The boy was visiting for the summer because the mom uh, has a troubled history, and uh, she has a history of having fractured the skull of the boy who's now turned up tentatively as dead's younger half-brother. Right, and it's not just her. It's the guy she has as a boyfriend in her house yes. who can't even go to the half-sister because there's a court order against him coming anywhere near her. And you're beginning to say, ooh, ooh, cuckoo, cuckoo, dysfunction. It's a house of, of ill means towards children. You imagine that father who had to send the child there because... The mother is entitled to her fair share of custody, what he must be thinking. And then, Jane, as part of this investigation, they questioned 140 registered sex offenders within a two-mile radius. This is Boise, Idaho. This is like leave it to Beaverland, father knows best, little house on the prairie. 140 registered sex offenders within two miles of this young boy's house. Yeah, well, it's an X-rated little house on the prairie, that's for sure. And I think I agree with everything. Yes, Wendy, we got to punish, but we've also got to learn and prevent. And I, I want to move on to the specifics, but I want to say that if we don't start educating people about peaceful conflict resolution, if we don't start making people psychologically aware of their underlying problems so that they don't resort to violence, if we don't start teaching some of these fundamentals that you get in therapy and you get in 12-step and you get in counseling, if we don't start teaching Americans this in school, we're just going to be doing this till the end of time because the way you I, prevent I this you. is making people aware of why they're violent so that they can get a handle. Otherwise, they're flying blind. Listen, Jane, Jane, listen, Jane, I agree with you this. totally. You can't teach, you cannot teach a cruel parent not to hurt the child. Well, wait, who agreed teach, with me? I want to hear who agreed with me. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. it's Terry. Okay. I agree, but I'll tell you, teaching goes with responsibility, you know, and I think that's why I agree with you. No, you cannot make everyone conform to education, but what you can do is if they don't conform, you can put restraints around them, you can put you know, uh, issues around them to protect them from these children. That's where, as it mentioned earlier, Child Protective Services underfunded. This is going amok. And we're looking around going, how could this happen again? We'll talk about this every week until something substantially yes. changes. Education Cor helps people who want to do the right thing and don't yes. know how. We have a lot of people out there who are in that boat, but we got a lot of people, and Jane, you and I cover them all the time, who they don't they know what the right they know you're not supposed to crush your kid's skull but they're putting their own needs ahead of their children no, they're, they're, they're living not, with they're dangerous flying people blind. They they're just one big react ball of reaction because they're not self-aware what therapy does is make you aware oh i'm having this impulse because Jane. let me work on oh, the Jane. underlying Jane. why Jane. and and get healthy so I don't have to lash Couple, out. Jay, Coupled Jay. with consequences, I, I buy it. I, I think you can do things Absolutely. on the front end and the back end, but we've got to start charging not just the people who hurt the kids, but people who live with others who have hurt the kids in Absolutely. the past. You know at least the big problem here is all of this that we're all talking about, or you folks are all talking about today, is after the horse is out of the barn. All of these cases that we come across, and we don't know what the disposition of this particular case is going to be yet, but all of these cases we come across with these children is because the children are vulnerable and most times the parents or the people, the guardians, are ignorant of facts. So education would be great, but it's usually after the horse is out of the barn. Well, that's why you got to start educating people start young, now. the next generation of parents, to, parent to stop this. Because I personally am so sick of covering these tragedies day in and day Me out. Too. It's giving all of us nightmares. It's, it's awful. And we have to state that as opposed to just saying, who, what, where, where, why, how. We have to state that we don't want to accept this anymore. More on this truly horrific tragedy. In just a moment, we are going to get into the details of the forensics. Who did this to this poor little child, this innocent child? Call me, 1-877-JVM-SAYS, 1-877-586-7297. Sound off.